the next part, Rising Oracle. So the the prequel to decentralized uh, thinking of decentralized loan. So pricing oracles. So DeFi scan and the DeFi wallet that we talk about uses a new ocean infrastructure. So it's basically the the blazing fast ocean infrastructure that we're talking about. So everything like refresh as fast as your computer can handle it. Basically how fast your internet is because you how fast you refresh now. So I think uh DeFi scan itself. Yeah, so I have the website here so you can see like DeFi scan. So I think sort of like a step before talking about like what is actually like price fit. So the first thing that uh, we decided to do on the file scan was actually the pricing oracles because we don't have that on the existing website. Like we have that, we have tokens, we have blocks explorer, but we don't have prices yet. So that was why uh, prices come first on the file scan before the block explorer. Even though we have the tokens, we have the uh, block explorer with the transaction explorer being worked on concurrently on in the new infrastructure. So the pricing fit or Oracle's fit itself is pretty much how we're going to power the decentralized load. So like the step before decentralized load. So price fit comes from like reputable sources. So like Oracle's itself aggregates data from like different pricing fits provided from a single price fit. So on the website itself, you can actually see that we have the pricing fit. So we have uh, three, we have four, plus one. So we have four pricing providers. Some of them are pretty well known. I think some of them know, know uh, what they are. And then we have our own decks itself providing a price fit. So they they, they themselves form this uh, aggregated price fit. So the aggregated price fit then, which is the ticker council. So which is what uh, user is talking about. Basically token and currency pair. So, so in this case, uh, the Tesla stock is matching with the USD, which is a stock, forms a thicker pair. So then the trusted answer itself are aggregated from three or four responding sources. So this, this is basically what Oracle is about. Oracle uh, takes the data from multiple sources in a decentralized way, but we publish it into the, the data itself. Then after that, it forms the price thicker at that point in time, at that block in time. Push in so, short yes. question. If, if there are three or four sources and one of the sources would show a different price, is it then that we show an average price or are we single out the one incorrect or the one deferring price? How, how, how does that work? Yeah, great, great question. So if you look at like, let's say Tesla, so you can actually see, I think this is one of the perfect scenarios because you can see there's a price line differences. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this example, so I think it was quite recent. So three out of four responded. So this wasn't, this yeah. didn't form the aggregated price. So the three that formed the aggregated prices, in case, in this case, we have them weighted at the same uh, amount. So everybody contribute, then everybody taking, so basically one, two, three plus together, divide by three forms the aggregated price. So once uh, the ticket council itself or the, the committee itself can decide like what is the weightage we should give to different oracles, for example, or like what is important. So, so that is for now is how implemented we are. We wait. We are waiting it evenly. Okay. I'm not sure if I can show you, but you can type oceand5chain.com version one main net prices. You can actually see it yourself if you know what. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, I see it. Ah, okay. <laughs> I can see the weightage. <laughs> then if you go inside and you type in Tesla. So this is this is what uh Yuzian showed just now, but even more uh even more boring so you can't even understand what's going on. <laughs> so you can see this is one price indicator, and then you can see okay, oracles. These are the oracles that responded. And you can mm. see the weightage. Everybody has the same weightage of 10. So 10, 10, 10 gives you uh oh, okay. the same weightage overall. Yeah, so this is like ocean infrastructure. You see the response time is automatic. Refresh, 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 no delay. Yeah. So the last price update, market is closed. So uh, we stopped updating the oracles once it stopped updating for more than an hour. So as long as update in an hour, it will market as active. So yeah, I think initially now we want to show you some sort of like understanding about like how it actually works. So we implemented some sort of very basic, very uh, uh, rudimentary price graph to represent historical activity on chain. So the data is taken directly from the blockchain. So everything that you see on the price feed itself is blockchain data. But in a historical sense, 
So what it, what it exactly means that is that look at this, you see uh, the price in a historical point in time. So how many oracles responded at the time? And what was the price at the time? What block mm -hmm. was it at the time? So you can so okay. see, so like you see the market, uh, so the market was closed in between. And when yeah. the market just opened up, I think this was, uh, so it was, this is my time. So uh, in US, I probably this is early in the morning. So it just opened up and you see the two out of four oracles responded. And then when slowly the market properly opened up, you can see, I think three out of four responded. Yeah. So every block in time, whenever there was a price change itself, this will then uh, update. So as we get more data, because this was just released, I think quite recently, we will, in, we will add in like more advanced charts that point to, uh, let's say a five average market time, or even like one month time, or even like three, uh, three month time, something like that. But yeah, so this is more or less for you to understand how it works like rudimentarily. So for markets like gold, commodity, they never sleep. So you can see the price is open throughout the day. Or even like Forex itself, Forex never sleeps. So yeah. So this is, this is quite eventful. I think if you look at the currency markets, it's actually less uh, eventful. There's actually not much going on. So let's go with SGD or Euros. Yeah, it's pretty much a straight line in yeah. yeah and and all this data is stored in the blockchain yeah so the transaction id is actually here if you actually keep, you can actually take a look at like what what uh creates this oracle data so once we roll out uh, the block explorer on device scan which will be pretty soon and the transaction explorer you can actually see the actual transaction uh creating that oracle price feed and that a block that was included in mm -hmm. So like the full picture of DeFi scan. Yeah, so it's actually uh, implemented just that it's not uh, UI ready. So you can actually see it. I can show you one way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. API is running, but hard to read. <laughs> yeah, same for ICX. So that is basically, make, make, we make the code first, which is the hard part. Then we, now we make the user experience. So that, yeah. is, uh, that is actually essentially what, uh, what we're trying to do now. So yeah, I think oracles, I think what you asked, so like pricing oracles collect price free directly from other markets or even from other chain. So we, we collect it from our chain itself. Then you put it on chain, you put it back on our chain. So multiple pricing oracles create a single price feed. That is how we power our oracles. Ah, okay. Understand it. Get it. And you you mentioned yesterday that at the moment, these are only uh, US price feeds, right? Uh, but I think you guys are looking into getting price feeds from other regions as well. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. So the, the, the price sources right now, we need to talk to them. We need to talk to various providers and we need to negotiate with them as well. Cause some of them, like their business is selling all these price feeds. So they're, some of them are like, ah, we're not okay with you taking our price and publishing our blockchain for everyone to use. So, <laughs> so it takes some. It's a bit yeah. disrupt, a, a bit too disruptive maybe for those guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah, correct. And a lot of them, they like the the more so far the the U.S. markets are quite okay, like the Asian and the European one. It's really tough. I maybe more protective of the, the the prices, and some of them will require a long delay as well before you can even publish on a blockchain. Mm. So that might not work so well because you can then game the system on a blockchain uh, to to exploit that. Um, yeah, and also, um, like, I also want to add that all these, all these uh, price oracles are maybe something to cover that, like, on this, it's completely serverless, like all, all the way. So once these price feeds are pushed uh, on the uh, on the price provider side, it just goes straight onto the blockchain without any servers uh, in between. Uh, they are managed by any, any engineers. So we just have to make sure that I mean, we just we, we're using AWS uh, to to push all of that on using Lambda, so there's no servers to be maintained. Yeah, pushing you want to expand a bit more on that. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't actually create anything for that because uh, it's quite boring. But I think I think the part <laughs> is true. So the, the, the new infrastructure, which ocean infrastructure, so the same exact methodology that we have for the Light Wallet. Light Wallet itself doesn't need a server. The Light Wallet con connects to the ocean infrastructure. So the, the whole ocean infrastructure concept is basically nobody needs anything. They just need to, when you want to do something, you just call that and then you can do it. Do it. So which is why it can power the new oracles. Uh, the day, the way is, 
So there is no downtime. The downtime is our code. So if you write back code, then it will cause the downtime. But in this case, there's no downtime because there's so many servers in the ocean infrastructure responding. So in this case, the ocean infrastructure that you see on my end is actually uh, part of a cluster that's in my region. So if you have it on your region, you have another cluster in your region. So if your region goes down, my, it doesn't affect me. That is like decentralization of, uh, that's ocean infrastructure decentralization. Same for the workers. If the infrastructure goes down, it doesn't affect uh the price feed because as long as aws don't goes down so if aws goes down there's another question there's there's the whole concept facebook goes down so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so that's how we ensure mm -hmm. the price feed don't go, goes down okay 